Adding types to macros is simply a way to add a bit of error reporting to your uh, macros, macro declarations. So for this, you need to require a new module and the module is known as syntax parse define. And now you have the ability to write, um, use this define simple macro that is a way to declare another, another way to declare macros where you can annotate the parameters to say specifically what they are writing. So let's try to motivate this. So here is an example where I write a simple macro that is, um, you know, I just write, I want to write instead of lambda x and then the body, which takes a lot, you know, it, it, it's very verbose. Maybe I would like to have a, a shorter form that is just saying fn and then the parameter because I only have one parameter and then the body, right? If it's a function with a single parameter, I would like to have a shorter form. And for that, I decided to create a macro, right? So when I write this, uh, it would be equivalent to writing lambda, well, actually parentheses missing, and then x, and I pass x, and I pass the number 10. So if I were to run these two things, they would uh, generate the same code and therefore uh, be equal. So if I were to write this, it would work well, right? But the problem is the question now becomes, what if I write instead of x, right? So I have... So when I write this, what I'm generating is, is this, right? So if I write it like so, I get uh, a procedure, right? Which is how record prints a Lambda. Okay, so now let's do something weird. So first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to write Lambda. So if I, I did a mistake and instead of writing X, I wrote one. And then here I write uh, 10, right? So it's a lambda and I, I wanted to write X, but instead I wrote one. What do I get? I get an error that says lambda not an identifier in the lambda, not an identifier with default or keyword at one. So it's saying that there is a mistake here at one that is, it is, it is expecting an identifier and I gave it the number one. So this is an error and it's being a bit, it's being clear on as to why this is wrong, right? So um, let's see what happens if I try to write an FN and here I pass the number one and I try to do another mistake. So this is a, a user error where the user is not using a lambda as they should be doing. So if I were to write that, I get the following error, which says the same error, but now it's talking about a lambda. But here you don't know why it's talking about a lambda. You define an FN. So why is it talking about a lambda? Well, it's talking about a lambda because it, it again, a macro is just generating code, which, which means that your, the macro that you just defined is leaking information about its implementation, which is wrong. That's something you wouldn't like to have. As you also see that you have this apply transformer, and this has to do with the macro system being replaced. So it's not really clear why you have that, right? It would be nice to somehow be able to give out better error messages. In fact, we can do that with this notion of types where we annotate, um, we have some form to annotate macros with what we expect it to be. So here, what I'm saying is that X has to be an, identifi an identifier and body has to be an expression, okay? So, which is interesting because now it means if I can write, if I write this, let's see what kind of error message I get. So now you see that I get an error in FN, right? I no longer get an error talking about a lambda that doesn't exist. I get an error explicitly saying that at one, I'm expecting an identifier, expected identifier. So the message now is makes sense. Now it's saying, oh, here I'm expecting an identifier and you didn't give it. So now if I fix it and I run it again, I get procedure again. So basically that's what it allows me to do. So. It allows me to have a bit of protection uh, as to what I'm expecting those parameters to be. Because in a macro, they could be anything. They could be code. They could be an expression. Of course, they cannot be parts of expressions. You know, it couldn't be just just uh, plus 
um, just plus and close parens like you can write in C. In record, you cannot do that. It has to be at least syntactically correct. It has to be parsed as an S expression. Uh, but it, but the S expressions in record, they do have qualifiers where you, you do know what is an identifier and what is an expression. So you can use this defined simple macro to kind of make, to write better macros uh, that have um, better user reporting uh, for errors. Better user experience, I meant to say. Here is an example where it doesn't fail. Okay. Another thing you can do is you can even add some literals, which are just really syntactic sugar. Because if you look at, um, you know, if I just write fn, it's kind of boring and confusing. Is this a parameter or not? So you can actually make it uh, more explicit. And you could even write um, with this same defined simple macro. You can even say, oh, I have a literal, which is this arrow. And that is pretty cool, right? Because now I can write um, the code like this with the little arrow, and it would show that x is the parameter, and then the body is after the arrow. That would be a nice way to write uh, my, my expressions. Let's see. I already defined it. Fn, so now let me copy this out. So, See what the error is. Expected identifier. Am I doing wrong? Oh, because I'm using here. This is wrong. All right, because this is this is an example for the old code, but now you write it with this notation. So with macros, I can even I can even write this, um, you know, some. I decided to use some arrow to just add some syntactic sugar to make it a bit more obvious that this is the parameter and this is the body. Um, so now my that would call a lambda. So if I do this and I pass uh, 99, of course I get 10 because that's the body of the lambda. Uh, right there it is. Okay, so this works. Um, so you can use literals, and of course you can use writes hey, here is an identifier ID, and here you can say it's an X for, um, and this would also work, right? Okay, so if I write 99 or zero, I get an error saying I'm expecting um, expecting identifier, and I gave it zero. Great, so this is another functionality of Define Simple Macro. And now let's revisit uh, pattern matching, now applied to macros. Now that you know a bit about pattern matching, I hope you will be able to digest um, the do macro, which is how I wanted to close, kind of explain what we used. Um, so we use Define Syntax and this parenthesis here. So then we're going to do Syntax Rule, which is basically going to be doing a pattern matching on whatever term you gave it. So in this case, you write do, right? The idea is that you write do, and then whatever you write here in the middle, you're gonna do a pattern matching on this whole thing. Not just what is inside, but really on what is outside as well. So in our case, we have do, and then we have something could be x arrow something here, and then something else like y arrow and something else, right? So we basically, we are defining in the first, in these uh, first parameter, sorry, parameter, what we uh, have to define is a list of possible uh, literals. So this is related to like we have here, We this is how we define literals using define simple macro. But if you choose to use define syntax, this is how you, you reserve, you say this is gonna be a literal and do not parse it as a variable. Do not parse it as an expression. This is something that is reserved just for syntactic sugar. So then the first parameter we're doing, again, remember we're doing a pattern matching. So what are we doing? What we see here on the left-hand side is going to be the do expression. So what we're saying is we always know that it's going to be do, so we don't really care for the first parameter because we know it's do. 
right? We could alternatively just write do here on everything. And then what do we have? Then we have identifiers, right? So either we have do and we have exactly one thing, which would be, you know, the same as writing um, do and then 10, uh, 4. So what that would do is just return 4. So return whatever is, if you just have do and one single thing, return that single thing. If you instead have do x arrow, let's say o, and then something else, right? x arrow operation, and then something else, as you learn in, in pattern matching, when you want to say the rest of something, you do rest, you do whatever variable you choose, and then ellipses. So that's what we're doing here, which means you would copy the rest of the code and you would take the first, just the assignment. And what would you do? You generate a bind. And what do you do with the bind? Well, we know that X is going to be the expression. So this is going to be very similar to what we did when we learned the let. So I recommend you to revisit let, which is was defined uh, in this slide, slide 21. You will, that's how we define lets, right? We define let like this. And a bind is, is a let. So a bind is a let, and therefore it has exactly the same code where we have the value, and the bind is going to apply this lambda, right? It's going to evaluate this and apply the result to the lambda, exactly what the let is doing. So here we're doing a let, right? That's, that's what the bind is. So we're assigning it to this variable, and this is how we do the pattern matching. And then the rest of the code, what do we do with it? Well, the continuation is going to be the body. Right, so we need to recursively uh, parse the rest inside another do because it is monadic. So that's why it's doing that. And finally, you have the case where you have a single thing that is a monadic operation, and we're simply discarding whatever value we had, in which case we just write a lambda and we don't care about the value, and we do basically the same thing as we did here, but since we discard the result, it means we don't care about the variable here and we use an underscore. So that's what's going to happen. What's why why the the this the macro for do works as it is working. So I hope you appreciate that now. You are able to understand it, I hope. Um, right. And in the next video we're going I'm going to talk about uh, homework assignment 7.